There is no job in Silicon Valley we cannot do, given opportunity. We're talking about here an opportunity gap, not a, a talent gap. Well, that was Jesse Jackson claiming a lack of diversity in Silicon Valley is signs of racism and sexism. And he's calling on President Obama to do something about it. Now, Jackson cites the fact that Silicon Valley is hip, you know, the place that puts out all these neat gadgets. So they kind of get a free pass, but it's actually one of the most biased industries in the entire nation. I got to tell you, I think Jackson and many of the others out there are missing a very, very important point. The most important point is about America's education system. We're mired in the same mindset that protects teachers, promotes them, promotes victimization, promotes hatred of capitalism. It's all failing our nation. The big reason the schools are failing our students and the nation, by the way, is the unions. They put their interests first. By the way, watered down curriculum does not help. And that's been demanded by people like Jackson himself so that kids can feel smarter by getting better grades. But in the real world, you either know how to code or you don't. Danny, should President Obama get involved? No programmer left behind. I think we should have a new program. Uh, no, I don't think involving the government in anything like that is a good idea. I, and already the government has a lot of policy around diversity and inclusion, particularly in, in the sense of corporations that want to do business with the U.S. government. They actually have to do anywhere between 30 and 50 percent of their business with women and minority-owned firms. So there is a lot of that going on at that corporate level already. I do like the fact that Jackson is doing two things right, in my opinion. He's pushing these companies to release these diversity reports, because that's great. It gets us talking. And in some sense, they are held accountable now that the numbers are accountable out Accountable for what? What are they doing wrong? No, they're just explaining that there's a lack of diversity in the industry and that they hope to tackle it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I also don't think the tech industry should be overlooked because, as he says, they do but Kate, they would tackle gadgets. it if there's minorities available for the jobs. He was way off base saying, you know, give us the opportunity. You could have the opportunity, but you're not, you're not educated enough to be well, able to Well, you guys didn't let me finish my thought, which was I agree with Danny and I don't think the government should get involved at all. Yeah. But President Obama tried to get involved in a little bit. He did the hour of code, the day of code. It was part of this campaign. I mean, that was his sort of involvement in this. But let's get to the root of the, the day problem. Of code? The day of code. <laughs> I don't know, like an hour Versus minute of code. 400 rounds of golf. Yeah, okay, people, go were, ahead. Yeah, people were supposed to go out and code for an hour that day. But okay. You don't know how to code. <laughs> You're learning now. No, it, it was a disaster. But the, the root of the problem is 1.4% of kids in high school only took the AP computer programming exam. That's compared to 40% of people and kids in high school that took the English exam for AP. The problem is, is the high school curriculums. Curriculums don't include computer programming, and that's what is killing us in the United States right now. You have to right start now. way before high school, though. Girls aren't taking up these STEM careers, and they need to know from the time that they're in first grade that that's an option. There and should I don't be a think requirement that in high school that people need to know how to code before they graduate. That's what I think. That's the next step. That's hey. what's going to get us up and running. And not just, you know, the higher-end high schools. You know, the, the high schools in my neighborhood, for example. We need to go into those code. high schools. Code? They can't even bounce a checkbook when you graduate high school. But that's the right. problem. Be realistic right about that. The, but, yeah. Matt, that's the problem. And don't you agree? Yeah, they need to have sure. teachers in there that are teaching this because that's what's going to get us up and running. We don't. And that's when, that's the, what's going to get The only thing I'll say that I think is good about this is you know you throw out the conversation and, you, and maybe we can have an honest uh, discussion about it because I don't think Jesse Jackson is going to ever be honest about this kind of stuff. I think it's a good old-fashioned shakedown of a real nice juicy industry with a whole bunch of money and I think he's going to actually ruin a golden opportunity if he uses the same tactics that he's used in other industries. But, but here's the bottom line because the bottom line is really important. There are reports and studies Studies done that show that diversity actually increases the the productivity of companies and their and their revenues. Right, as long as everybody knows what they're doing. Exactly. All right, guys, I gotta <laughs> blow the whistle on that one one more time, and let's open up a page from Payne's Investment Playbook. Well, you know, the stock market, I gotta tell you something, isn't the only place where we're seeing a whole bunch of contradictions. There's the pulse of Main Street. According to a Gallup poll, American confidence in an economy actually swooned last week to the lowest point all year long. Take a look at this, down significantly. What the heck is going on? This is the lowest since December of last year. And yet, when the market opened, we opened a little higher. Then you remember that boost we got? That was consumer confidence. Now, this was from the conference board. The reading, 90.9, the highest since October of 2007. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. I mean, you have to go way back here. But it's pretty clear also from this chart that confidence, which used to move in tandem with the stock market, they always move together, still has many, many miles to go to get back to where we used to be. So let's talk about this, guys. Um, you know, 
Listen, I don't want to, well, here's the thing. <laughs> you know, I'm not like Dr. Doom or anything like that. And I like to always see the, you know, I, I'm a sort of a rose colored glasses kind of guy. But when you see things like that, it's pretty interesting. And like last night, I got a tweet from one of the viewers right after the show. And he actually took exception with me saying that the economy was, quote, good. Here it is. Bill tweeted, love your show, but quit saying economy is doing good. The middle class are now the poor. Listen, I take his point as it's really not good based on history or the millions. Listen, we've got millions of people who dropped out of the workforce. Uh, millions of people are still unemployed. Millions have been added to the food stamp program. Millions are making less money now than they made even 10 years ago. But I think it is getting better. And it's because of America, the heart and soul of America. Listen, I got to tell you something. There's been a war against success. There's all kinds of regulations. There's all kinds of dark clouds. But Heatha, you keep the pulse of Main Street through retail, how people are spending their money. I, I mean, is, 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 is he right? I mean, uh, you know, am I making a mistake? By saying it's good, like, am, am, am I right? The, or the confidence board is right, or is, or is Bill right and the Gallup poll is right? I, I hate to be a contrarian, but I think the bill might be a little bit right here. I think consumer confidence in this instance is a little bit engineered. And the reason why I think that is because people have greater access to credit right now. It's easier as an individual to get more credit cards, and I think people are spending. And as we know, historically speaking, in this country, we're a consumer, we're a nation of consumers. We like to spend, we feel better, we so think we have more money. false sense of security. False sense of security, exactly. I also think, you know, perception becomes reality. So people perceive it as not being good because almost anybody in the middle of America, either they're out of work or their neighbor or family members out of work. So they perceive the economy as not that good. I get clients all the time that have jobs that say, Matt, how can you think the economy is good? It's very similar to your tweet. Why are you bullish in a market when the economy is not good? And unfortunately, a lot of people sitting at home on their hands have not been buying stocks because they don't think the economy is good. They've missed I'll out tell you why. You know, because 77 yeah. million people are in debt. I mean, it, having debt collectors call them because they right. can't pay off their credit cards. I think we'll touch on I, that in more debt tomorrow, too. We've as a said, of though, that we've been cheering kind of mediocre news, and I do think that that's a trend. So the truth Green is... Green shoots, Kate. You ever heard that? When the rally first started in 2009, March, it was like, yeah, uh, yeah the, the numbers came out and the company lost $4.73. They fired 50% of the staff, but there was a green shoot. We saw two cars <laughs> in a parking lot. Well, I do think we are kind of cheering mediocre news, but last month's jobs report was good. We'll see what this month's jobs report is. And consumers' outlook on the jobs market is at its highest point since 2008. And I got to tell you, maybe it's false, but they are feeling more confident. So, Danny, are this we setting ourselves up? Is the American public setting itself up for believing in America? Again. This is such a reflection of our society, right? We are so we are so entitled, but we don't want to do the work. You know, we are we are so all about you know getting the goods, but not but not paying for them. And I really think that there is a trust issue here. There's a big trust issue with respect to the financial system. We haven't quite worked through that yet, and that's going to take some time. Is it also in your mind then sort of a bifurcation? People who are doing well are doing very well. You know, like uh, those who can use the front door of Heathrow's building, mm -hmm. and those who aren't doing. So so well, have you used the back door? And, and, aren't doing so and well. And if you see this kind of roll out into the future, the problem is, and there was a couple of articles out there today about this, is that unless you've got the middle class involved, that's where the masses are, that's where most of the money is spent, and you only have spending happening at, at the upper echelons, it does not filter down. So well, that could credit be a card and no credit cards, people can't spend money unless they start to make more money. All right, next up, my second stock suggestion of the show. I admit, you know, there are some holes recently in my theory about housing being big in the second half of the year. But this company is showing major signs of improvement for the second half. I think it's the place you want to be. Uh, a lot of renovations. If you've done any, you might want to look into the stock, but you might have bought the product. Don't move. I want to make you more money.